Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to His Word Ministries on tonight. I'm in our Bible study. And can, I, can we all just join together and just get on one accord spiritually and mentally. And we just going to pray um, before Apostle Taylor comes forward. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, on this day, Lord. We want to thank you for just continuously being with us, Lord, continuously keeping us, Lord, while we're at home, Lord, while we're at work, Lord, while we're on the roads, Lord, and please, Lord, we just ask in your name, Lord, right now, Lord, to be with the ones that's here, Lord, and be with the ones that's on the way here, Lord, and please, Lord, just keep everyone safe, Lord, on the highways, Lord, just keep everyone safe on the interstates, Lord, and please, Lord, just continue to keep everyone, Lord, continue to keep our minds, our bodies, our spirits, all on one accord in your, with your word, Lord, and please, Lord, just align us today, Lord. And Lord, just please, Lord, just allow the study tonight, Lord, just to pierce our mind and our hearts, Lord, and please, Lord, just continue to, just to keep everybody, Lord. We ask you, Lord, just continue to be with the ones that seek this tonight, Lord. We ask you to be with the doctor's hands, Lord, as they perform surgeries, Lord, as they perform what they perform, Lord. And please, Lord, go out into the streets, Lord. Be with the homeless today, Lord. Be with the drug addicts, Lord. Just be with everybody, Lord. Please, Lord. And just lead somebody into a church, Lord. And let somebody ask, what must they do to be saved, Lord? And please, Lord, we ask you on today, Lord, to just keep all the families today, Lord, all the young children, Lord, all the all the teens, Lord, all the adults, Lord, all the older adults, Lord. So we just ask you, Lord, just to please, Lord, continue just to keep everybody, Lord, throughout this week, Lord, Lord, we ask you, Lord, continue to keep everyone, Lord, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Lord, even on Sunday, Lord, please, Lord, just be with all the mothers, Lord, please, Lord, we ask you, Lord, just continue to keep them, Lord, continue to keep your hands upon them, Lord. So please, Lord, just continue to be with us, Lord. Be with this study tonight, Lord. Be with this Bible study, Lord. Be with everyone up in here, Lord. And please, Lord, we ask you, Lord, in your name, Lord, just continue just to be who you are, Lord. Continue just to keep us, Lord. Continue to bring us closer to you, Lord, each and every day, Lord. Every hour, Lord. Every minute, Lord. Every second, Lord. Get into our prayer lives, Lord. Please, Lord, get into the prayer room with us, Lord. And please, Lord, just... Be with us, Lord, as we pray, Lord, in your name, pray in your spirit, Lord. Please, Lord, just continue to protect us, Lord. Protect us in the nighttime, Lord. Protect us in the morning time, Lord. Please, Lord, protect us from the unseen, Lord. Please, Lord, dispatch your angels today, Lord, to protect us, Lord, against witches, Lord, warlocks, Lord. Lord, curses, Lord, generation of curses, Lord. Just please, Lord, just continue just to clean us up, Lord. Continue to keep everyone, Lord, everybody, Lord, and just bring us closer to you, Lord. Bring us closer to you, Lord, each and every day, Lord. And please, Lord, we ask you, Lord, all this, Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And at this time, Apostle Taylor. Hallelujah. Well, let's open up on tonight. Let's go to the book of Colossians. It's where we're going to do our study from on tonight. So, told you in advance to give you a heads up on your reading. Hopefully you got a chance to read it in a different version of translation. One of the versions we're going to look mainly at tonight is um, the message. So hopefully again you got a chance to look at it in a different one other than the King James. King James is good, but we want to just look at some things. I got to study in this particular chapter this week, and we began to just look at, again, the, as we're coming out of resurrection, and last week we saw where resurrection clears the path for us. Resurrection brings us into that place where God is clearing so much transpires. So much takes place when God resurrects or at this season of resurrection. So tonight, we want to get into uh, this word even the more. So hopefully you got a chance, again, as I said, to read uh, the entire chapter. The entire chapter is not where I want to go, but again, so much that is in here speaks to where we are in this season. Amen? All right. 
So let's pick this up tonight in verse 15. And I will read it first in the King James, and then we'll start looking at it in some of the other verses. So Colossians 1, verse 15, it says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, talking about Christ? It says, For by him were all things created that were in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and what? For him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn, from the dead, that in all things he may have the what? Preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. All fullness dwells in God. Well, the word on Sunday was whole, be whole. Amen? And so, again, we see that we're only complete in him, but we're only full in him. And it says, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have you what? Reconciled. But when they reconciled after his death, burial, and resurrection, in the body of his flesh through death, there it is right there, to present you what? Holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. But look at this. If ye continue in the faith, grounded in self, and be not a moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, again, that's the King James Version. It is establishing the preeminence of Christ or the, the preeminence of the anointing. Christ is the anointing. God's anointing. In essence, what God did through his death, burial, and resurrection, it set the stage for you. It set the stage for where we are now. So we've been talking about this fourth dimension, or fourth dimension living, which I'm looking at and entitling walking in fulfillment. But to walk in fulfillment is again, as we were looking at Sunday, is to be whole. To be whole or to be fulfilled is the same. And that's what you got to catch hold to it now, is that God did this for you. Everything about this season is about blessing you. Everything about this season, it is to establish you, notice what that verse is, in the faith. You've got to stay in the faith. Amen? The Bible says without faith, we can't what? We can't please God. So if we're going to please God, we got to be in faith. We got to believe not only what he said, but we got to believe what he did. And that what he did, he did for us. Amen? Amen? That everything God has done was for our good. Amen? Glory to God. So let me get out of this. Go to this. So, again, looking at that definition, I want to give you a definition of divine fulfillment. Divine fulfillment means accomplishment. Jesus wants you to have accomplishment. He wants you to be accomplished, which simply means what? Finish. Finish it. Amen. God wants you to finish it. Guess what? He hung, bled, and died so you could finish. Because unless he had hung, bled, and died, you weren't going to finish it. In fact, you weren't going to even get started. Amen. So, it also means perfecting. In the divine fulfillment or in the divine plan of God, God says, I'm perfecting you, which simply means I'm maturing you. The Bible tells us as newborn babies decide to sit and still remember the word, so you can grow by it. Why is God constantly, consistently giving us word? He wants us to grow up. We ain't pleasing God being yet babes. God said, no, you got to grow up. Paul said it this way. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. But the day came, I had to walk in my manhood. The Bible 
Bible said in Romans 8 that all of creation is waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. In essence, grow up, come into fulfillment, come into completion, come into wholeness. Be all God wants you to be, calls you to be, desires you to be. Amen. Look at this next one. So not only are we looking at accomplishment, perfection, it means to bring to pass. God says, listen, in a season of divine fulfillment, I'm bringing my word to pass. I'm bringing my purpose, my vision, the thing I desire to pass. It also means completing. He's finishing the work. He's completing it. It means performance or consummation of a promise by a promised maker and keeper. I like that. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. It is the performance or the consummation of a promise by the promised maker and keeper. Well, who's our promise maker? God. Who's the promise keeper? God. So God says, here we are again. When I can swear by no other, I'm doing this by myself. Ooh, oh. now, now, here's the key. Don't miss this. Even though he's doing it, and he's doing it by himself, you can still be in a position to receive what he's doing. Come on now. Don't miss what he's doing by being out of place. Don't miss what he's doing by first and foremost not believing. The Bible says, to all that believe, in Acts 13, to all that believe, God says, if you will just believe me, I'll show you. I'll show you what? Signs, wonders, and I'll show you miracles. Amen. I will bless your life. Glory to God. So that's what divine fulfillment is. It is when God brings to pass everything he promised you. So remember we've been talking about the Old Testament was the promise, but the New Testament you find the fulfillment. In essence, it was in Jesus that everything came to be. Watch this. We saw, well, go, back, go back to Colossians 1. Look what it said. Verse 16. For by him what? Were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. Now, if you just get this, y'all, if it's created by him and for him, he got ultimate control over it. Even though he has given us control, the ultimate is nothing can come against God. And if you are in God, then guess what? Ultimately, it can't come against you. Weapons that, watch this, come on, come on, try to help. That's what we quote the verse, Isaiah. No weapon formed against us, right? Shall prosper. But at the same time, tell the truth, you yet get in fear though. You let fear still rule your life. In some instances. But he just told you all things were created by me and for me. But at the same time, he says, even though the enemy may use it and it may form, guess what? I got you. You gotta understand who I am. So if we're gonna walk in a place of divine fulfillment, we gotta understand what it is to walk in the fatherhood of God. Okay, what am I saying? Romans says, we have not been given the spirit of fear again to bondage, but we've been given the spirit of adoption whereby we can cry what? Abba. Abba means father. In essence, whereas you didn't have a right to call him father, you couldn't approach his throne as father, but because you've been adopted now in the beloved, you can go to God and say, Father. 
But he ain't just father as father for him. But he's father over everything. So in turn, everything has to submit to him. And when you start to understand this principle, you don't have to feel things. You just go tell your daddy. Just like when we were little, what you say, I'm going to tell my dad. Huh? Anybody start messing with you? Or your siblings start bothering you? I'm going to tell daddy. Huh? Why? Because daddy took a preeminence in the home, in the family. Right? Well, God's that same daddy, but he takes preeminence in all the earth. He said, now can y'all still in the kitchen? Go back and read 16. For by him were all things created. Say all things. That are in where? And? Okay. So whatever's in heaven, he knows about it. Whatever's on the earth, he knows about it. Okay, let's go a little deeper. Visible and invisible. Now, visible we okay with. Invisible means what you can't see. God says, but even what you can't see, I got it. You can't see it, but I can. But if you stick and stay with me, I give you the spirit of discernment, you'll see it too. You'll know it's there. Glory to God. Look at what he said. Whether they be thrones, or dominions. He said, it doesn't matter their rank. I know about it. Come on, y'all. If we get this right here tonight, God already knows about it. Yeah. Everything you fear, everything you tremble, everything the enemy make you shake in your boots about, God says, I already know. I got this. Come on, y'all. He says, Thrones or dominions or principalities or power. Well, we know we pick up principalities in Ephesians 6. And God says what? Put on the whole arm. And that's what I'm giving you what you need to stand against principalities and power. There is nothing for you to fear. God is not the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And that's it. You already got the victory. He says, and all things were created by him and for him. And look at this, 17, pick it up. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. That's when your trouble or anything comes against you, you got an expiration date. God said, it can only last as long as I allow it to last. That's when we sing that song, Trouble Don't Last Always, because it don't. It comes, and then what? It goes, amen? But you got to get this in your spirit. Here's the knowledge. And then it goes on to 18 and says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have a preeminence. What gives him the preeminence? He defeated everything that could come against you. What gives him the preeminence? The Bible says he was tempted at all points like as you are, but without sin. So God said, because you in me and I will get you with it. Because I overcame it, you overcome it. That's why when you go, when God's speaking to the church in Revelation, he keeps saying, to him that overcomes. And that's a, you got to overcome some stuff. You got to be at a place right now. I see what God's word says. I know what God is, is purposing for me. I got to walk in this. That's why I'm titling this walking in fulfillment, walking in the fourth dimension. You're all, God has already made the way, but you ain't walking in it. The fourth dimension is a dimension that I know. Not that I'm guessing. Don't take this wrong. Some things you ain't even got to pray about. You don't have to pray about what's already answered. Come, watch this, watch this. Here, here you go. What good is it doing to pray? Jesus prayed that God would answer him. Why he wouldn't answer him? He said, because we already talked about that. We settled that. That's done. You go into the cross. 
You're going to the cross and you're going to be the firstborn from the dead so many sons can come to glory. Now, what's making you bag up is you in pain. What's making you bag up is you under attack. But we can't let our attacks stop us from getting to the place God is doing for us. All right. Now, let's get to my translation. All right, so I'm going to pick this one up first to read it to you in the message. And so Colossians 1, I'm going to pick it up in 15. Listen to the message. Listen to it close. It says, we look at this son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see God's original purpose in everything created. The original purpose. God says, every time you're looking at Jesus, you see the original purpose. Okay, now, simple, that real deep. What then is the original purpose? I just read it to you in verse 16. He said, you look at the sun, you see the original purpose. The original purpose in God is that all things consist and operates and fulfills itself in him. Everything is complete in him. Says for everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. See, the only way you're gonna know your true identity, you gotta know him. Well, that's what, what happened to Peter, remember? Who do men say I am? And God the Father rose up in Peter, and Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Watch this. Living, not dead, living. Which was an indication to us at Peter's discourse that guess what? The cross wasn't going to be enough to hold him. Because he was already the Son of a living God. Watch this. He was before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. Who's holding it together? Who's keeping it from, from dismantling? God. Well, who's holding your life together if it ain't God? Who's keeping you on point in check if it's not God? Because truth be told, all of us should have blown out a long time ago. None of us in this room should be here but God. If it were not for God, we would be here. The Bible says it's the goodness of God. It brings us to the place called repentance, which is what? To change our mind, to recognize we can't do this in and of our own strength, but through God, we can do all things. We used to love the quote that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now watch this. You can do it till it's time to do it. As long as all you got to do is quote the scripture, you're good. What about when it's time to walk it out? What about this time to manifest? See, this is what Peter did. Peter said, man, you out there walking on the wall. God bid me come. Jesus never told him, don't come. He said, because if you see me do it, you can do it. Let me take you back again. When I talked about walking, having an understanding of the fatherhood of God. What did Jesus say in John 17? I do that which I see my father do. I see that which I hear my father say. Part of that fourth dimension is having an ear to hear what the spirit is saying. Having the ear to hear. The Bible said the spirit ascends the ladder, come back, go and get the mind and heart of God and said, this is the will of God. 
Now walk in it. For as many as are led by the Spirit. We all came with the Spirit till He started leading us where we ain't never been before. We all came with God until He takes us into unfamiliar territory. Oh yeah, I'm led by the Spirit. Okay, but why are you bagging up? It dropped me today, I wrote it down. Backwardness is not progress. The Bible said, put in his hand to the plow and start looking back. God ain't even fit for the kingdom. Backwardness is not progress. God is a God of progress. God don't want you going backwards. How can you grab the plow and turn it loose? No. See, see, that's mean if there's an old saying that said, be careful what you ask for, make sure it's what you want. See, a lot of times we ask for what we ain't ready for. And then when God calls to lead us, in that direction, down that path, and we ain't never been there before, but you love to quote Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. But now all of a sudden, because that ain't what you asked for, you that ain't what you thought you should have. Now it ain't righteous. <clears throat> but you prayed about it. You God to bless you. You ask God to do this for you. And then the minute he starts doing it, you want to go the other way. We talked about this. Children and elders, God bring us out. We tired of this. We tired of running. God brings them out and then they all of a sudden send me back to Egypt. Make up your mind. God is not the author of confusion. He's the God of peace. Glory to God. Look at this. So he goes on, he says. He was there before any of it came into existence, holds it all together right up until this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. Now watch this. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade he is supreme in the end. He was supreme in the beginning. He's supreme in the end. Come on, another scripture we quote, we don't believe. He's the same God, he don't change. <laughs> see, 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 gonna be the days we talking, but don't believe what we say. Today, today, and forevermore. Watch this. You don't even realize what you said. You said God was already in your future. That's what the statement is. He's the same yesterday that you well, The same God I met that got me started. The same God that's here with me now is already ahead of me for where He's taking me. In your tomorrow. You just ain't alive. Let's go a little deeper. God been there and back. Because how can he tell the spies that there were giants there if he hadn't been there? But even though he saw the spies, he is still said, don't go. In fact, he didn't tell you because he knew you didn't want to go. Because you got there and saw him and got scared. So see, sometimes, watch this. You always want God to tell you stuff. God said, and if I tell you, you won't go. That's why the Bible said, we know in part, we see in part. Watch this. With that which is full, it's come. Come on, check this, check this, all of us. Watch this. Have you ever gone through something, got there, and said, now I understand everything I went through. Now I see what God was doing. So why couldn't God tell you? Because you wouldn't have showed up. You wouldn't have showed up. But watch this. Even though you just 
Jesus got here, it was already done. You just got here, but guess what? It was already done. See, we still ain't catching this. There are things waiting on you to catch up with your faith. There are things waiting on you to catch up with what you say. Because some of you got your words where your body has no intention of going. But it's leading you. Huh? Come on. Watch this. So he's supreme in the beginning, supreme in the end. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Isn't that good? Bible says, watch this. Everything finds its proper place and it ain't even crowded. And that's the, let me put it to you this way. God says, I'll wait you out. Hmm? I'll wait you out. I see. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe People and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fitted together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. Bible said everything got fixed at the resurrection. Everything that was dislocated. Y'all ain't catching me. I told you this last week. Watch this, watch this. The resurrection is putting you in place. Did y'all see that? Let me read it to you again. Watch this. He says, not only that, but all the broken, dislocated pieces of the universe, and look what he said, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. The resurrection fixed you. Y'all ain't catching me. Not only have you been fixed, you've been fit. What does that mean, Pastor? That means God said, I put you where I wanted you. I put you where I wanted you. You were trying to do this, do that, be here, be that. God says, but in resurrection season, I put you where I want you. Because we talked about the resurrection is to put you back on the path. He said, yeah, you were on course, but right now I got you right where I want you. Watch this. He says, look at verse 21 now. He says, you yourselves are a case study of what he does. At one time, you all had backs turned to God, thinking rebellious thoughts of him, giving him trouble every chance you got. But now, by giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to God's side. Come on, y'all, put this thing together. Get an understanding. God said, yeah, you were doing that. There was a season. You did what you wanted to do. But what you keep failing to understand, I brought you to my side. I brought you, I fixed you, and I put you where I want you. Are you seeing it? He said, He says, but now, by giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you. You see why resurrection is so important? 
Man, if he had not died, I'd have still been broke. I'd have still been dislocated. I'd have still been doing everything, driving myself straight to hell. His death interrupted my plan. Thank God. Every day you ought to thank God he interrupted your plans. Huh? Look what he goes on to say. But now, by giving himself a new the cross, actually dying to you, Christ brought you over to God's side and put your lives together. What did he do? He put your life together. Whole and whole. Now that's when I got excited. Huh? He put your life together whole and holy. Now watch this. Now, she came with whole, but God said, I didn't just make you whole. I made you holy. I made you whole and holy at the same time. Don't get it twisted. I didn't bring you over here to get you whole and let you still do everything you did before you got here. Just told you, we fixed that. We fitted you with a new outfit. That's why you ain't happy with that no more. That's why that's frustrating every time you try to go back because it don't fit you no more. They were saying, get in where you fit in. Huh? You don't fit over there no more. Huh? Now, he fitted you for himself. Okay? Uh, Rose did that, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Sunday, in teaching. Well, what is God calling you out to? Himself? The first thing you got to be committed to is him. Why? Look what he did. Look what he did. He fixed you. He fitted you. Then on top of that, he made you whole. Now, here's where we got to stop put a pin in it. Got to catch this. Then we go back to Sunday. You already whole. What you fighting is your own disbelief. What you're fighting is your own unbelief. God said, you hold. And that's a, everything you telling you you can't do, God said, it's already done. Everything you feel is unworthy to do, to accomplish, unworthy to be, God says, I've already done. Okay, so earlier, uh, Michael and I were talking earlier, and we didn't, uh, he had you know, revelation got him out of Joseph, but here's the, here's the caveat, even to this, what uh, God gave him, tell him what God gave him. Oh, he said, um, if ye be yet faithful. Be yet faithful. And he took him to Joel, I mean, not Joel, Joseph. Joseph was still faithful to what he saw regardless to his circumstances and situation. In essence, he was still faithful to the dream even when the dream didn't look like it was coming to pass. So the caveat that I added was this, that in every single situation and circumstance, what God showed him in the dream, he became even in the pit, even in jail. Even in every circumstance he found himself, he always rose to the leadership position. Out of everybody that was where he was, he still became the leader. Why? Because God had already made him a leader. Part of the journey was discovering who he was. Y'all ain't catching me. Everything you've been through has been for you to help discover what God already put in you. What God has already sanctioned for or ordained from the foundations of the world, that that's you. 
But right now, you wrestling with, can I do it? Can I be it? Of course you can. Why? Because God said so. Can I do it? Of course. Why? God said so. But you trying to backpedal on the promise. But what you ain't understand is already fulfilled. It's already done. Stop letting the enemy make you sell out for him when God says, I gave you that. I gave you that promise. I gave you that desire. I called you to the spot. Come on, y'all. Look at this. Look at the book. He says, back again in 21, you your own case study. You have to you your own case study. God says, study you to know me. You your own case study. Look at what he said. He says, and watch this, y'all. Watch this. This is so good. He says, so he, um, Christ brought you over to God's side and put your lives together, holy and holy. Watch this. In his presence, you don't walk away from a gift like that. Again, you see what I'm saying? Walking in fulfillment. Look what he said. You don't walk away from a gift. Well, what is the gift? The gift is what God has called you to in the fulfillment of his own divine purpose. He said, if you want to walk away from that, watch this. Jesus, you ain't walking away from this. Told me 
واليقين So I'm going to tell you my story. Now, why? Because I'm traveling. I'm doing what I want to do. Guess what? It dries up. Don't tell me God won't shift you when he get ready. Hmm? All of a sudden, ain't no calls coming. There are no invitations. So you ain't going to do it? Well, guess what? This is the only door going to open for you now. It's the only door going to open. And it opened quick. It opened without hassle. Smooth as silk. But I see it. I went home. But guess what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But what you learn from these type lessons is now when God comes and shifts again, okay, God, whatever you say. Hmm? I remember when I was pastoring this church, not this one, when I was at the other one, and the angel did. Everybody had left out of service. I was just sitting in the open. And I heard the door open. An angel walked in. I didn't know it was an angel. It was a man. He walked in. He said, are you the pastor? I said, yes, sir. So how can I help you? He says, I got a message for you. I said, okay. What is it? He said, you're an elder. You're a pastor here. He said, but this is not your ultimate. He said, in fact, I can exactly see if this is good. He says, in fact, he says, there are some things you are questioning about what you are even preaching and teaching because you know that what's in society is different. What's in the word is different. He says, in the next three years, you're going to be sick of this. He says, and God's calling you to be an apostle. Well, I, at that time, I didn't know what an apostle was. I had no clue. I was an elder. And when, when we know back where I pray, he says, you'll be an apostle. Okay. I missed it. But he was on point. Because there were some things I'm like, that ain't what the book said. You know, because you know, folks just doing stuff, but it ain't what the book said. So I prefer to do what the book said. So he said some other things. And then he got up and said, I'll see you. And I got up behind him, and as soon as I walked into the door, and he started walking, I tried to go back, and then I looked back, and I didn't see him. But after that, prophets started coming. I think we were having an anniversary. Prophet Clancy came. He was there with somebody else. And he said again, the same. He said, I see elder, I see pastor. He said, but you're an apostle. And then it just started, just back to back, there it come, there it come. And I'm like, okay, God. But the thing I had learned, I wasn't saying no. I said, okay, now who is one? And I got to get up on the there and listen. You see what I'm saying? And the connection started coming. But I didn't say no. Because I had said no before. And I knew that wasn't a thing to do. Because when you tell God no, he'll speed it up on you. Huh? And it's like you know you believe it, but it's because you in fear of what you don't know. Let me help you tonight. It ain't that you need to know. He knows. Trust his leading to where he's taking you. Because he says, I've already fixed a place for you. When I shifted it, started this ministry. Some years ago, I was on the pastor and I on a cruise. There was another prophet out of Wisconsin. We had seen each other all of a sudden. We come out the door. 
He said, now, young man, I don't know if you know what a prophet is. He says, but I'm a prophet, son, son. He said, but I've been seeing you. And he said, every time I see you, God say something to me. He said, but now I'm going to tell you what he said. He says, in five, he said, in seven, in five to seven years, God will always shift you. He says that you've been doing what's not your own. Because I was a part of the organized ministry. He says, but God says, I'm giving you your own. He said, now, I don't know how many years you've been where you are. He said, but go home and get ready to move. Nothing happened really. About three months down the road, after that, there you go. Things start happening. Things start lining up. God puts you where he wants you. You do what he wants you to do. You, you okay, watch this question. What did, what did God tell Paul, which was Saul at that time? Why do you keep kicking against the creek? Do you really think you can defeat me? Now watch this. I know you're a murderer. I know you've even attacked me. But I'm going to use you for my life. See, that's what you got to catch and understand. Because the enemy will beat you up with your past. Your past is about nothing to God. The Bible said God said he don't call the wise. He called the foolish. Don't let nobody disqualify you from your future looking at where you've been. Because God know how to clean you up. God know how to straighten you out. God know how to get the rough spots of you. We don't know where we went all down that behind the back of the way to help you. But look what he said. You don't walk away from a gift like that. You stay grounded Stay steady in the bond of trust. Constantly tuned in to the message. Careful not to be distracted or diverted. This is what he said. There is no other message, just this one. Ain't no other message, but be whole and be whole. Trust me, look to me, believe me, watch what I do. He said there's no other message, just this one. Every creature under heaven gets the same message. And he says, and I, Paul, am a messenger of the message. The thing I fought, I've now become. The thing I tried to get away from is now my life and life. The thing I never wanted is now all I got. Jesus. The resurrection will bring you to a place of wholeness and holiness. It's the message of God.